honor to ask you so um what about the job opportunities because i know a lot of people are curious about this whole getting a job after 10 academy so what about job opportunities after 10 academy how did it look like for you okay um first of all i should tell you that i have my job today because of 10 academy uh this is where i started so i finished 10 academy i was uh, recruited directly um i did an internship for a year and now it has been three and a half years that I'm working in this company. So after the internship, I was offered a, a full employment and I'm still there. Um, I would say that 10 Academy is already a good exposure that you're having. It's, um, it's an extra that you're having compared to your uh, classmates uh, from university that are not in 10 Academy. So that's already a bonus, I would say, for you, because now you have that exposure. And I know Arun and his team uh, work hard to find places for you. So um, trust them, you're in good hands. Um, and because of that, you have this additional exposure and you have more chances to, to, to land in a place that uh, hopefully you will grow and, and stay like I have. But for me, um, it was, I would say it was a little easier than it is right now, because right now you're all from the same background. So you all are after the same uh, type, I would say, of jobs. Um, for me in our group, uh, I can't remember if there were other engineers. So it was um, just a little bit easier uh, to find a placement. I mean, if they're looking for an engineer instead of like 40, they are like five, of course, you have higher chances. But um, I would say on the on the bright side, uh, because you are all specializing in one field, Arun and his team also, they are uh, focusing on jobs in this field and you are getting known as experts in this field. Um, it is very likely that companies uh, will be very interested in you. So I think you have a lot of chances if you do this right, of course. Um, I mean, anybody can start an academy, but if you don't make your, the most out of your time there, and uh, you also have to take initiatives. Um, it's it's all good that they are looking for, for, for placements for you, but you could also from on your own, side uh, you could also be applying for internships jobs and yeah i think it's already really great that you're in this program and you can really use this as um as a bonus yeah to get to get jobs okay yeah thank you for that um anyone has any question about anything you would like uh, we have to talk about probably about you know balancing work life you know and personal life because um we all know this is the covid era um probably you want her to talk about you know job opportunities or how she was able to know you know just finish with the deadlines because we also had our own tight deadlines and assignments and stuff that we had to do so if there's anything you would want her to talk about so just kindly unmute yourself and go ahead anyone Please don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, trust me, they're, they're not shy. I think they're just making up their minds about what question to ask you. Anyway, so in the meantime, as we are waiting for them, um, Rawia, if you could just tell us about um, how you're able to balance, you know, work life and your personal life because you're working from home. And honestly, they're also working from home doing this course and then they have their own personal lives as well. So sometimes you will tell yourself that I am going to work until 5 p.m. and then the evening I'm going to do my own stuff, but it doesn't actually work that way. So how have you been able to balance, balance those two very important things? I give my son a lot of snacks. <laughs> no, no um, honestly, so maybe um, because now we are entering this uh, work-life balance, maybe I should tell you about uh, the other side of my life, which is not work. So I have, um, I am married now. Um, after I came to Germany here, I, I, I got married. I have a son. He's uh, 17 months old. 
and I am six months pregnant. <laughs> so on the on the personal life, um, it's great, but not a lot of time, no free time at all, like you can imagine. And because of COVID, um, the schools were closed, daycares were closed. So my son has been uh, literally with me 24 hours a day uh, while, while I was working from home. And that has been uh, very challenging, I would say. And I had to put some systems um, and techniques and, and, and you know, like in place uh, to be able to balance that. In the beginning, it was really chaotic. Uh, imagine you have a, a 17 months old running around and screaming and you're in meetings the whole day. I work 40 hours a week. So yeah, like Esther said, I am uh, working until about 5 p.m. And um, my son, of course, he's he's still just a baby. <laughs> he's uh, always uh, wanting attention and all. So I think what applies here, um, even if you're not, you don't have children or anything, um, uh, you have your own uh, family, you have your own personal life. I think what is very important to balance things out is having systems in place. So uh, preparing for the day ahead, that's something that has helped me a lot. And I think that's what has allowed me to be able to, to, to maintain the two. So. For me, my, my systems in place are, for example, um, I look at my calendar, I know I have this and this and that um, meeting scheduled for the next day, and I plan activities around it for my son, for example. I know I have a one hour meeting uh, at nine in the morning, and I know that's right about when he finishes his breakfast. So I keep a few special toys uh, by my table and when he comes to me I know what to give him uh, and I know for example if right now it's his snack time I will keep the snacks with me when he comes to me I know what to give him so um, this doesn't just apply for kids I mean you have to find your own systems that work it's also very 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 important um, to have um, a balance, not just between your personal and work life, but also your social life. Um, there's a saying that you cannot pour from an empty glass. Uh, and I, I really believe in that, truly believe in that, because it happened to me uh, after being 24-7 uh, with my son at some point and trying to juggle with work uh, 40 hours a week. Um, it was an impossible situation. So you also when we talk about work-life balance, I see it as work, personal life, which includes your family, and your social life, which includes your friends and social activities, whatever you enjoy. And I think it's very important to have systems in place. And also what is very important is that stick to your plan. Um, you could have, I understand that sometimes there are unexpected things that happen. You might have a um, plan something with your friends on Saturday morning and then you wake up, your son is sick, <laughs> it happens, it happens all the time. But if you can help it, uh, just stick to the plan and, and don't mess up your schedule. Sometimes it's just we do it out of laziness, we do it for no good reason because we think, I um, uh, let, let me just sleep in today or something. And then you regret it the next day, you know, when you feel drained out and like um, like you didn't do anything this weekend or something. We all know that low energy. So I think it's very important. And for me, this works wonderfully is to stick to the plan. <laughs> so if you can plan your week ahead, okay, I have this and this and those uh, very important things this week. You plan it out um, and you look at your calendar. I always stick to my calendar uh, and I see, okay, so there is no social activity plan for this week. What am I going to do? I'm going to call up a friend, uh, schedule a coffee or something. And that is my social activity. Or um, if we are doing something else, we want to go bowling or I don't know, hiking. Um, of course, no hiking at six months pregnant, <laughs> but if you're not, you can go hiking. Um, you social those activities that you know will keep, um, your sanity it will keep you sane <laughs> those activities are very important as well and of course you schedule a uh, time for your family you schedule pizza night movie night and when it comes to work these 
other things that you have done in your social and personal lives will help you a lot because you will not feel like work is draining the life out of you. And this is what happens to many people. We call it a burnout. It is actually a medical term now. People actually have burnouts. And you can get a letter from your doctor for a burnout now because it's a very real, true thing that happens. Whether it's work or studying, for me, it's the same thing. Whether you're a student or you're working, for me, it's the same thing. Uh, you're a professional in your own uh, field and you are having to do the work, you are having to put in the work and you're expecting certain results. If you think that it's a very good idea to spend 50 hours a week uh, just studying and, and not doing anything else and like sleeping the rest of your time, uh, of their time because you're so tired, um, it's not a very good way to go and it's not something that is sustainable in the long term. You will feel drained out and no matter how passionate you might have felt about your profession or your studies, if this goes on like this and you do not balance your personal and your social life, you will reach a point where you will ask yourself, is this really what I want to do? I don't think I'm very interested in this anymore. Um, and oftentimes you do not reach this point because you truly do not feel interested in a field you reach this point because you feel burnt out. You feel like really it's draining the life out of me and you feel like uh, you need a change. And this is often what happens with students also, uh, of course, with professionals also when they change careers, they change uh, their field of studies, they feel like, okay, I'm done with this. Um, this is too much. I can't do this anymore. And you feel you need, you have a need for change. Uh, because change is a sensation and we all like these sensations. So you feel like, okay, let me drop everything else, start something new, everything will be better. Uh, change is exciting sometimes, um, but that's not what's really happening behind the scenes. What's really happening is that you do not have a social life, you have not balanced your personal life, and now you completely feel drained out and you feel like you need a change of life, not just a change of studies or profession. And this is a very dangerous um, uh, step. This is a very dangerous place to be in your life. So do make time uh, for your social activities. Very important. Um, if any of you are family men, family, um, your mothers or, or wives, um, I do not know. But if any of you are have that kind of commitment, it's also very important to find time for yourself. Uh, you need to be able to schedule things alone or with your friends, whatever you enjoy most. It's very, very, very important. Yeah. So Thank if you so much. If yeah. anybody has any question, yeah. I, see, I see a hand up. So, um, Cindy. Uh, hi, Rovia. Hi. Who's, hi. Who's talking to me? Cindy. My name is Cindy. Okay, hi. Hi. So, uh, I'm very curious. After you, after, immediately after you finished 10 Academy, then you got placed. How was your first few weeks and first few months like? And what do you think are some of the skills that made them feel like, wow, we want to keep her after her internship period is over because she brings something extra to the table? So what do you think gave you the upper hand and how can everyone, you know, like the trainees benefit from that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will answer the second part of your question first because I think it's more important and then we come back, we circle back to the first part, yeah? So to answer the second part about uh, what made them feel uh, that they should keep me, um, I, I think personally it's, um, you have to demonstrate when you're doing an internship uh, nobody expects you to be an expert. Uh, if they they consider you an expert, they wouldn't hire you for an internship. They would hire you for, for employment. So whenever somebody hires an intern, it's because they're taking a chance and they want to see how this person is going to grow over the next few months or, or a year, if your internship lasts a year. Um, and they want to see... Um, if that person is willing to do what it takes to contribute 
to the work, to the team, to the company, to the growth of the of the company, and they want to see uh, your determination and your commitment and your passion for learning. So I think that is uh, something very important because when we start an internship, we feel the burden that we have to prove ourselves. Yes, you have to prove yourself, but you do not have to prove that you're an expert. This is where a lot of people go wrong because when you're trying to prove that I am an expert, I am a professional, uh, you are missing out on the, on a lot of learning opportunities because then you will be afraid to say, okay, I do not know this. Can you help me with this? Or you will be afraid to say, um, I have never come across this. I have no idea what to do. Um, maybe one of you knows or you can direct me to somebody who know and then you learn from it. If you already want to show off as an expert when you don't really know, uh, the, you don't have the expertise, you will be in that dark place where you're not learning anything and you think the company is buying your acting game, <laughs> but eventually it shows in the results of your tasks and in your work. So they know what's going on and they know that you don't know this. Uh, you think that you, you are fooling somebody, you're not. So I think what is very important when you start an internship, be willing to admit when you do not know what to do, when you're wrong, when you have done a mistake. And this is what companies look for. So if they see that, okay, he or she did something wrong, but that person tried to correct that mistake and learn from it and then did it right, it's more than um, you thinking that you're fooling somebody into pretending that you never did it wrong in the first place, You know, if you know what I mean. So I think this is one thing that is very important. So when you start the internship, position yourself as a learner. You're not the expert yet. You're not the professional yet. Um, and I, I think that's to answer your question, that that's what I did. Uh, if I didn't know, I would ask. If I did something wrong, I would admit my mistake and so on. Um, also, it's very um, important to take initiatives. So it doesn't mean that if you're an intern, you just have to take everything as it is. If you feel there's a gap for, for something, for some improvement within the company, something that could be done better, a better tool that could be used, um, a way to increase the efficiency of, of, of uh, the workers or anything, uh, to be more productive, you should feel free to suggest it. Um, and who knows, uh, your your plan or your project might even get implemented. So this is, um, I would say, this is what I did uh, to, to, to stay, um, for them to keep me after the internship. Um, and then your the, the first part of your question, um, sorry, what was it again? <laughs> I think I was so How focused. Was, yeah. It's okay. How was the first? Oh, yes, weeks yes, of yes. Um, I think for me personally, uh, it was not too bad because uh, I had been studying abroad uh, for four years. So I, I'm from Mauritius, but I was studying in Brunei, which is very, very, very far from home. Um, and before coming to Ten Academy, I was there for like four years and I traveled a lot during that time. So being in a new country, in a new place, starting life over was not new to me. Uh, I think that helped a lot because when I finished Ten Academy, I had to come, I went to Mauritius for a few days and then I had to come um, to, to, to Germany to start the internship. And um, if somebody has not, had that much traveling experience before, it might be a bit of a culture shock. Uh, for me, it was not. It was quite easy to adapt. So that was, uh, thankfully, it was uh, it was very small, smooth. Uh, but of course, it had its challenges. Um, the, I had climate issues here. It was really cold. I was really sick the first few months also. Uh, but you you just learn to, to to blend in and i think you just have to have an open mind wherever you will end up uh, after 10 academy you just have to have an open heart and an open mind and you have to to tell yourself that um everything in the beginning feels difficult 
but it's just a transition place. Uh, it's just you stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, and oftentimes people give up. That's right when they give up, when they feel like uh, things are too hard. I don't like it here. You know, it's like um, when you feel like you're not in a good place, uh, emotionally, physically, mentally, you, you tend to associate um, negative things to everything. And I, I feel like this is what often happens also. So if you start an internship in a new place, it doesn't even have to be a new country. I mean, even in a new city or anything. Um, and it can be as simple as even if you're working online, you're starting in a new company, it's the same thing. It's really the same thing. You will work with new people. You have no idea how they will react. Um, what are the right things to say? What are the things not to say? <laughs> um, uh, you cannot control everybody's uh, reaction to your to what you say or what you do, but you can uh, learn from it. And I think it's adaptability is um, is a key quality that uh, everybody needs to learn or, or have. So. I think, yeah, that's my best advice. Just have an open mind. Wherever you end up, give it time. Yes, give it time and give it a chance. If you go with a negative mindset, it will never work out. Just tell yourself, yes, I'm going to give this time and I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. I hope I have answered you, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm glad we are. Yeah, in the chat box, um, we have a question for you from Amon, and he has said, um, what practices in your case helped you, especially during an intensive learning or demanding job? So what practices helped you walk through a situation that was very intensive, whether it was a learning process or a job that was very demanding? Hmm. I think he's, uh, he's referring to good health. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say the first thing is you have to listen. I know a lot of us, myself, maybe on top of that list, I'm not a good listener. Uh, and, but one thing that will always help you out in life, not just job or, or anything, is to take a step back and listen. That's what we do not do often. That's that's it's difficult. It's it sounds like something really simple, but it's very difficult. Put yourself in a position where somebody is screaming at you, and and you will tell me. So you want me to listen to what he's saying? Yeah, I want you to just take a step back and listen. Sometimes um, people tell you a lot more than uh, you can hear. That's something I have learned, and that's something I try to practice. It's very hard, but I try to practice this. Whenever I find myself in a very difficult situation, uh, a very um, intensive situation, I try to listen first before talking. I have a rule. <laughs> if I'm very mad, I count to 10. I know it's it's a, it's an old one, but it works. <laughs> it works. And I'm, if, I, if I'm very, very mad, I count backwards. So, so I don't know, maybe this will help you in, in, in the next um, intensive situation that you have, like you asked. So that works for me. If I'm uh, somebody, maybe a colleague or something is saying something and I'm not happy about that, I just, you know, I just listen, count to 10, and then I find that I calm down and I'm able to react uh, less aggressively and in a better way. And if I'm very, very mad, I count backwards because it takes longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I would say you have to find one activity that you really enjoy. Um, this is what this is in line with what I mentioned before, because you need to keep your sanity. <laughs> Trust me, as a wife, as a mom, and currently pregnant, uh, I often feel like uh, this is it. I am going insane and I just want to scream at the whole world from my balcony. So at that time, uh, what really helps, 
for for me and it doesn't have to be the same thing for you is if i have exercise that day so i was exercising a lot before my pregnancy also and i still do and i find that on days where i did not exercise i am a lot more moody irritated uh, short tempered and i will um burst out uh more easily so for me that's just something for some people it's meditation doesn't work for me unfortunately i have tried and doesn't work but uh, i i hear that it helps a lot of people even if you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is meditate for 10 minutes uh, it really changes your, your day it changes the way you react to everything else um i i can't think of other examples but it could be going for a walk it could be if you have a dog just walking your dog at some at a specific time and like i mentioned before put it on your calendar i know it could be stupid i put exercise on my calendar <laughs> because if it's not there it's not going to happen that's that's just how it is for me and everybody my husband knows um, uh, that at this time i am going to exercise no matter what happens even if the food is burning on the stove i am going to exercise at that time <laughs> So everybody has to know and you have to set limits around yourself. That activity is very special because that activity is what will keep you sane for for the day, for the week, for your life. So find that one thing. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be an hour long of exercise. Nobody has time for that. It could just be if you go on YouTube, you find a lot of videos. You could find a 10 minutes exercise and it really changes your mood for the whole day. So that's that's what I would say. The first thing, listen. Take a step back and listen to what's happening. It's too easy and quick to 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 judge and misunderstand. That's what happens often. So listen and the second thing that find that one thing that will keep you sane for the whole day and that will keep you in a good mood and do it every day no matter what happens. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um I just thought about um question that's going to be the last one for my end. So during um our time at Zen Academy it was a little bit different from what they are experiencing now but then you remember we had to work on the project and we had our usual daily classes and our individual work and everything. So um how did you manage to do everything, you know? with the deadline and you know having to do different things you know we had to do the technical side we had to do the non technical side you know meeting all the deadlines how were you able to achieve that i think the first thing uh and the quite obvious thing is uh with your team members i, I i'm not saying that because esther was my team member uh, i'm saying that, but it's it's just a fact um when you work together uh th there's a saying that if you walk alone uh you will not reach far but if you walk together you will reach far um and that's true so for me personally it was with the help of team members of course i, I like i said you cannot do it all that's something we just have to take it off our mind you can do something alone of course uh but there will all it will not you will not reach that level of perfection that you 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 want or or you were expecting so if you want something well done do it in a team yeah if you want something quickly done you can do it yourself um but no guarantee about the results so for me it was um the team because we were working late nights like really late nights and waking up really early i am not an early uh i do not wake up early esther can tell you that um i was late for a class with a bunch of other guys and then arun made us stand up in front i will never forget that in my life i still have that picture i still have that picture <laughs> yeah it was a little more important for me to grab my coffee before coming to class <laughs> because I, i i had to wake up so early so without coffee you would not hear from me or i would not be able to think um <laughs> yeah but the whole team was uh everybody was lifting each other up i would say and everybody was keeping each other going so even if we were really tired after we finished like wow we were in class like at 8 10 p.m. 
and then we come back and then we have a group meeting so i am like very serious we were together like after midnight many times um and at that point you feel tired you want to give up you just want to go to sleep but if um you, you have a team uh that is lifting you up and while well, you are lifting each other up it's a lot more enjoyable and it's it gets easier also and it was a lot of fun also i mean i had a lot of fun <laughs> during 10 academy it was killing us <laughs> with all the work but i truly had a lot of fun yeah i think you have to find the good in all things uh, look at the bright side find the good and you know no matter how difficult things are just try to enjoy it yeah yeah thank you so much um i i really like what you said you have to find the good in all things so um for current trainees batch four yes it seems like it's a lot of stuff you know you have to do the the technical the non-technical um it's a lot but then just try to find the good take it that you're learning something take it that you're investing in your future you know you're preparing yourself for the world of work so just try to find the good in all um is there any comments from anyone or any question from any trainee anyone who wants to say something because think, we're almost out of time yeah i think uh, Ra rachel is asking um maybe mm -hmm. she joined later or oh, he sorry Yes, we were working physically at that time. We were in Ghana uh, at Asheshi University, and uh, our training was in person for, for a month. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was an intense four weeks. Imagine if we had gone there for three months where we are. It oh was, my God, we would have killed each other. I know. <laughs> You know, being with being in a team for twenty four hours not not the best idea. Not the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyone else who wants to say something, feel free. Just ask any question about anything, or if there's a comment you want to make, or just say thanks to Rawia. Anything. Oh, we have we have a quiet um, batch here. They are not like us, Esther. No, they're not. Uh, we are, you know, I think yes. they're so well behaved. Arun, Arun had to shut us up all the time. <laughs> I know they are so well behaved. They are so well behaved. <laughs> but um, yeah. So Christian is saying thank you. Cindy is saying thank you. Um, so I'm also saying thank you for the very short notice. Oh, okay. So Beckett has raised his hand. So yes, go ahead, Beckett. Yeah. Uh, I, most of the questions that I had. Oh, was asked by Yati and some of them by Cindy. Uh, what I want to say is, I want to say really thank you uh, for You're what you are doing. Like, uh, I get a lot of experience, uh, like just listening uh, to the experience that you had and try to, I'm trying to uh, make it my own and try to uh, achieve that one. Like most of the time, you, you lose yourself when trying to do some of the things and you will forget there are other things that you need to do and that's a great thing uh, to remember all the time and the other thing is like trying to listen before uh, expressing your feelings like I never tried like <laughs> numbers but yeah uh, it's uh, a good way I think like li trying to listen will help you like manage your temper and other things so I get a lot of uh, things from me and I will say thank you Yes, especially for the guys. It will help you with your girlfriends a lot. <laughs> Every girl wants a guy who just listens and says nothing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're, you're welcome, though. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, Beza, Bez, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you and good evening, everyone. So um, the experience I'm hearing from you is it make me like a, a bit relaxed. You know, I, um, I was I was feeling overwhelmed and the speaking was a bit challenging, but through things from your uh, sharing, I see that things will um, 
get better when you have a plan and a schedule. So I'm going to try that. And thank you for sharing your experience. That's, um, that's made me very relaxed. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, when I was in Ten Academy, I felt overwhelmed as well um, by all the things. But uh, I would say use this time as a learning experience. And if you can learn discipline, accountability, scheduling, and sticking to your plan uh, right now, it will help you a lot in life later. When Once you have kids, once you have a family, uh, and you're working, and you have a lot of other things going on, then 10 Academy will, will seem like a cakewalk. <laughs> already i'm learning how to schedule my time like i was thinking i was i do say like i was uh, busy the whole time but i know now how busyness is uh, with ten academy and i have to schedule for everything yeah that's that's very true i know it's intensive and it's overwhelming but it's truly preparing you for what's ahead and what's ahead does not get any easier <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so um, that's all for my side. Um, if there's no more question, Rawea, do you have any parting words, any parting advice, or just wishing them all the best? Oh, someone has raised a hand. Yes, maybe you go ahead. I just have one question. I told. <laughs> the in the future the load will be somehow less than this but as you said now it's even increasing <laughs> yes i mean yes right now you are in in the in this chaos i would say in this uh, overwhelming um training and and you're feeling like it's a lot I would say it's a hundred percent an accurate representation of what's waiting ahead. And you feel like, okay, now um, it's too much work that I'm having to do. And I, you, you, you even ask yourself, is it worth it? Yes, it is like a thousand percent worth it. And this is something that I didn't know back then. And this is like an advice that I would like to share. Use this right now to get some discipline in your life. Uh, I know it's very difficult, but really, really, this is, I'm sorry to say this, but this is the less intense uh, thing that is waiting for you uh, for, for, for the next few years of your life. Once you start working, you will have real responsibilities and then you will know what uh, overwhelming really means. Uh, because then you will have not only responsibilities um, to do your work, you will have financial responsibilities, uh, you will have family uh, responsibilities. Then you talk about <laughs> being overwhelmed. <laughs> it does not get easier, but if you do it right, it feels easier. Yeah. So if you can use this time right now that... For me personally, where I am in my life right now, and I look back on 10 Academy, it was easy. I know it was not when I was doing it and I was in that phase, it was not, it was overwhelming, it was a lot. But where I am right now and what I'm having to, to, to deal with right now, uh, a husband, a child, uh, another on the way, my work, uh, and I'm in a, I, I, I have to say again, I am in a, in a, in a foreign country. So I, we don't have any family at all here. I only have my husband and son. So it does not get easier. But if you use that time right, and I wish I had done it before, uh, I had to learn it the hard way. If you use this time right where it's overwhelming and all, and you learn discipline, you learn how to schedule things and you learn how to be accountable to yourself. You learn how to make things happen despite obstacle and despite uh, time restrictions and despite everything else. It's going to help you a lot. And then things will feel a lot easier in the next few years. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Okay, guys. Um, any other question before we say our goodbyes to Rawia? <laughs> Sorry, my son just came. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, so um, I'm guessing. Hi. 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 <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing we don't have any other questions. So I'm um, from the Ten Academy team. Thank you so much, Rawia, for making the time to just have this very informal but highly educative session with us. And um, I hope that um, it's going to be impactful in the trainees to know that yes, mm -hmm. everything we're doing now is yes. the yes. It's just actually preparing them for the world of work. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's the.